Helping you live healthy. Juvenile arthritis affects nearly 300,000 kids and teens in the United States. Many people think arthritis is a disease that affects seniors. However, arthritis is more common among older adults. Thousands of children are diagnosed yearly. So joining me now to discuss juvenile arthritis, also known as JA, is Dr. Jennifer Rammel. Good morning and thank you for being here with us. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So uh, let's just start with how common is juvenile arthritis? Sure. You know, like you said, there's about 300,000 kids in the country that have juvenile arthritis um, and just a little bit more than type 1 diabetes. Um, here locally, um, I'm the only pediatric rheumatologist in Jacksonville, and I care for about 250 kids in the greater Jacksonville area with juvenile arthritis. And what are some of the symptoms that children deal with? Sure. So typically, you know, it kind of comes, they start noticing that they start getting some joint stiffness. It can either be in, you know, one joint or it can be in multiple joints. There's different types of arthritis. Um, but the parents might notice that, you know, all of a sudden the kid is not playing as much as they were or have trouble going upstairs or have trouble kind of gripping or things like that. So, you know, if there's any concern for the kid is not kind of, you know, being able to function at the, the level they were before, those are the times when it might be time to talk to your pediatrician or consider seeing a rheumatologist. And is there a difference between uh, juvenile arthritis and just arthritis in adults? Yes, there's two main types of arthritis. So the first kind, like the juvenile arthritis, is very similar to like rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory autoimmune disease. Um, the other type of arthritis is called osteoarthritis, which is quite more of the wear and tear kind of chronic use um, that you know older folks get or people who've you know had more um, repetitive use injuries. And can uh, juvenile arthritis be difficult to diagnose? What are some of those uh, symptoms that parents should look out for in their kids? Sure, absolutely. So it's really what we call a clinical diagnosis, meaning that they need to be examined by a pediatric rheumatologist. We do obtain some labs to look for any evidence of inflammation or autoimmune markers, but not every kid has all of those. So it's really kind of a whole picture that we look at. But again, the biggest things to watch for would be a kid that, you know, all of a sudden you start noticing is not using their joints as much as they should, any potential joint swelling, stiffness, especially after periods of inactivity, like, you know, in the morning or after naps or after long car rides. Uh, those would be the big things to look out for and make your pediatrician aware of. And is this random or are there preventative measures that parents can take or, you know, to prevent their kids from getting juvenile arthritis? Sure. So, you know, with any autoimmune disease, it's tough. You know, we think it's kind of a two hit hypothesis where you have something in your genes that kind of predisposes you to this. And then you get that second trigger. Most commonly, it seems to be an infection that kind of brings it out, but it can also be related to, you know, hormonal changes, puberty, um, other environmental factors. You know, we're still learning more about that. Um, but in general, you know, a good healthy diet with lots of, lots of antioxidants is the biggest thing that we recommend. Um, sometimes, you know, family history, history predisposes children to this. And and so, you know, the general risk of autoimmune disease is about 1% in the general population, you know, no matter whatever type of autoimmune disease it is. Um, but if you have a direct parent with something autoimmune like psoriasis or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, the kid does have a five times increased risk. Um, but the good news is, again, they still have a 95% chance of not developing those things like their parent has. Wow. And what are some of the uh, biggest common misconceptions about uh, this disease? Sure. I think, you you know, you definitely touched on one that, you know, people think that children can't get arthritis. And again, it is the most common autoimmune disease that I care for as a pediatric rheumatologist. Um, so it is something that, you know, still kind of think about, you know, if your child is having joint pains that are seem more severe or they're not, are not going away, um, it's definitely something to look into, especially if it's been going on for, you know, more than a month. You know, that is usually we make that diagnosis after symptoms for at least six weeks consistently. Thank you so much, Dr. Remo. It was a pleasure having you on this morning. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it.